Hello physicists and welcome. In this session we'll be looking at angular momentum and angular impulse. Sorry it doesn't have a name but uh, we'll call it angular impulse. Hey so um, there are again parallels between the linear and the rotational world so we'll take a look at our uh, linear variables and our rotational variables. Okay. Hey so uh, again let's go and uh, uh, let's see identify some of the relationship between our linear and our rotational variables. Hey our velocity in the um, linear world can be calculated um, or determined from our rotational uh, world by looking at the radius times um, omega, our angular velocity. And then there's a new value we have here that uh, P, our momentum, times the, uh, the radius is going to be equal to L, our angular momentum. Right. Hey, so again, our velocity has its correlation of angular velocity, omega in the, in the rotational world. Our momentum... Uh, P equals MV has the value or the symbol L um, being I omega, but we could also express that as, uh, let's see, the radius times our mass times velocity. Take a look at how that comes out of here. All right, that comes in handy when we look at discrete components. So if we look at our momentum at a certain distance from some pivot, we can come up with our angular uh, momentum. Hey, our impulse back in the linear world is what caused changes of momentum, and it was force times time. Okay. In the rotational world, there is really no um, name for rotational impulse. Um, it's just given the value delta L, and it is the torque times the time. Right. Hey, and then uh, one important area that we look at for uh, conserving momentum is in collisions. In collisions, we assume there's no uh, outside impulse for that short period of time during the collision. And we know that our linear momentum before, the sum of our momentums, or momenta, is equal to the sum of our momenta afterward. And in the angular world, that is true as well. The sum of our angular momentum before and after the collision um, are the same as long as we really have no net torques going on during the short period of the collision. Let's take a look at a couple of examples that will help illustrate these points. First one, hey, we have a solid disk, mass 3 kilograms, radius 0.5 meters, rotates at, sorry about that, rotates at 6 revolutions per second, clockwise. It is attached to an electric motor that provides 5 newton meters of torque uh, clockwise for 4 seconds. We have two things. One, calculate the initial angular uh, momentum, and two, determine the angular velocity after 4 seconds. All right, let's get started on this. Hey, for A, I'm trying to find my angular uh, momentum um, initial, and we know that that's equal to um, I omega. Hey, for I, I see it's a solid disk, so I is going to be equal to mR squared over 2, and omega looks like it's going to be equal to our rate of rotations in revolutions per second times 2 pi. Let's go ahead and put in our numbers here. Our mass is 3 kilograms. Uh, the radius of this is 0.5 meters squared over 2. It looks like our angle, let's see, our angular momentum, initial angular momentum is, let's see, uh, 3 times 0.25 squared. That's 0.2. Okay, so it looks like it's 0. 375 kilogram meters squared. And our angular, let's see, um, our angular velocity, we have six revolutions per second times two pi radians per revolution. Okay. Six times two is 12 times uh, pi. Wait, what do I get there? Hold on a moment. Hey, so I get 12 pi, of course, okay, radians per second times 0 0.375 kilograms. So my initial momentum is equal to 14.13, what is it, kilogram meters squared per second, whatever that weird unit is. All right, 
That answers A. Hey, B, we're looking at determine the angular velocity after four seconds. Hey, we know that our final momentum is going to be equal to our initial angular momentum plus our change in momentum. Change in momentum is going to be equal to our torque divided by, sorry, times time. Okay, and once we have our final um, momentum, we'll be able to look at our final angular velocity. All right, let's go uh, get started on that. Our torque is, what is it, 5 newton meters times 4 seconds, and I get 20 newton meter seconds. I'll leave it to you to uh, see that a newton meter second and a kilogram meter squared per second are the uh, the same. Hey, I'll add that to my initial momentum of 14.13 kilogram meters squared per second plus 20 newton meter seconds and I get I'm going to come up over here my final momentum is 34.13 newton meter seconds, which is going to be equal to my moment of inertia times my angular velocity. Let's go ahead and divide each side by our angular velocity, sorry, our moment of inertia. And we found that to be 34.13 newton meter seconds divided by it's the same uh, disk so 0 0.375 kilogram meters squared hey and so what do i get when i do all this it looks like i get about 91 radians per second hey if i uh, divide that by um, let's see, 2 pi, that works out to around, uh, what does it work out, about 14 and a half or so, 14.5 revolutions per second, just for reference. So here's our answer to B, right here, 91 radians per second, our answer for A, where did that thing go, over here, our value for A. All right. Hey, so one more example. Let's take a look at this one. Hey, a 1.5 long rod. Okay, there's our 1.5 long uh, rod mass, 0.5 kilograms, initially at rest, is pinned at its center uh, point, at its midpoint, and it's free to rotate about that. A dart is thrown at 8 meters per second at the rod and hits perpendicular to the rod, 0.4 meters from the pin. Calculate the rate of rotation of the dart rod immediately after the impact. Hey, we can probably see this as a collision problem. Hopefully you can see it as a collision problem. All right. Hey, and so what that going to tell us that our, uh, let's see, our initial momentum or the sum of our initial momenta is going to be equal to the sum of our final momenta. All right. Hey, but we have an odd thing. We have just this dart traveling straight. How do we end up figuring out um, its moment of inertia or its uh, angular momentum? Because we've looked at, hey, I omega as being equal to our um, uh, angular momentum. Uh, how do I end up getting this on something that is not rotating? Well, works out easy. That our other way we can express our moment of inertia is looking at our momentum times the radius about which it's uh, traveling. Or another way of saying it is its mass times velocity times the radius. Hey, so initially, the only thing that has angular momentum is the dart. So let's go ahead and we'll um, see that our initial angular momentum is the mass of the dart. Uh, I'm going to say it's equal to 0 0.1 kilograms. All right, here we go. So 0 0.1 kilograms times its velocity, 8 meters per second times the radius 0 0.4 uh, meters. I multiply all that together and what do I get? Um, 0 0.32 kilogram meter squared per second. Hey, there, um, our rod standing still here um, has no um, 
angular momentum. Our final momentum is going to be composed of two things. It's going to be equal to the momentum of the dart plus the momentum of the rod final. Okay. Hey, R, what do we have some information? It hits uh, the dart, and when a dart hits something, it sticks. That works out nicely. So we know that omega for the dart final and is equal to omega for the rod final, which we'll just call omega final. All right. Hey, so our final angular momentum is going to be equal to, and we can this will look like a perfectly inelastic collision problem in the linear world. It's going to be equal to the moment of inertia of the rod plus the moment of inertia for the dot dart times the angular momentum, sorry, the angular velocity of the whole system. Hey, before we couldn't come up with a value for the moment of inertia for uh, the dart, and now we can? Yeah, because we're, um, if we assume that the dart is stuck into here and rotating about here, and the dart is small enough, we'll assume it just ends up being kind of a point mass. We can now say that, that the moment of inertia for the dart is going to be the mass of the dart times that radius 0 0.4 meters squared. Hey, the moment of inertia for the rod, we know it's that value of, we're going about the center, so it's going to be 1 12th times the mass of the rod times the length squared. Let's go and do some plug and chug. All right, so the moment of inertia for the dart is going to be 0 0.1 kilograms times 0 0.4 meters squared. What do I get with that? 0 0.4, 0 0.4, it's 0 0.16 times 1 tenth. I'm going to get 0 0.016 kilogram meters squared. How about the moment of inertia for the rod? is going to be 1 12th mass of the rod, 0 0.5 kilograms times its length, 1.5 meters. We'll square that, put that in the calculator, and I get, again, okay, I got 0 Kilogram meters squared. Let's add those up. Uh, kilogram meters uh, per second is uh, equal to 0 0.10975 times omega final. Go ahead and divide each side by 0 0.10975. One zero nine seven five, and my final angular velocity two point nine. What is that? Two point nine six radians per second. So right after impact, that's the rate it will start rotating. I guess I'll call that counterclockwise. So for now. That's physics.